New poll that shows tough times lie ahead when it comes to Ontario's hospital staffing crunch. Let's listen in. And illustrate the gravity of staffing crisis that have been years in the making, but which is now reaching a new breaking point. The survey confirms that workers are deeply unhappy about their working conditions with profound consequences on their mental health. The results show that a vast majority of staff don't believe in the government will manage to make improvements over the next year. And that more than two in five workers are considering leaving the sector within the next year. Before I get into the results, it's worth reiterating the context of our hospital crisis. Based on Stats Canada's data, staffing levels in Ontario hospitals have increased by a merely 0.4% on average since March 2020. That's grossly insufficient considering the surge in demand due to population growth and aging, plus the burden of COVID and other respiratory viruses. Staff turnover in hospitals have been 10% in the recent years, with 19,000 vacancies across the sector clearly showing poor working conditions have created a mass retention and recruitment crisis. Acute staffing crisis is directly tied to the decline quality of patient care. Perhaps most illustrated by the emergency departments that were closed over the past two years. There were 868 ERs closed last year, a staggering number considering sh shutdowns were unheard prior to 2022. Staffing shortages also contribute to a long surgical wait list. Over 100,000 Ontarians are waiting beyond medical recommended guidelines and suffering grave consequences of delayed procedures. This underscores the important points. Without workers, there are no health care. The entire system depends on the labour, and yet their concerns are continued to be overlooked. In this survey, nearly 70% of workers polled across Ontario say there are not enough staff to deliver high-quality patient care. Because understaffing is so rife and because staffing levels haven't increased significantly through the pandemic, workers are finding it impossible to provide patient care that they are trained to provide. No matter how hard they work, no matter how many breaks they skip, and they stay behind their regular hours, it is not enough. This situation has caused a high prevalence of moral injury, as nurses, PSWs, and others are feeling acute distress, knowing that they are operating in a system designed to fail, knowing that they are unable to provide the patient care that patients deserve because the system is so poorly resourced. We hear from members, many workers are breaking down and crying, knowing their patients are being shortchanged. They cry before their shifts, they cry after their shifts, they cry during their lunch breaks, they even cry at home as workplace stress bleeds into their lives. The polling results confirm the deep negative impact of working conditions on their mental health. 62% say they are exhausted. 49% say they have anxiety. 41% are telling us they're dreading going to work. And 44% are having trouble sleeping. These findings are nothing short of alarming. If two-thirds of hospital workers are dreading going to work, if half of them have work-related anxiety, what does that say about the Ford government's stewardship of our health care? And what does that say about the future of our public health care system? Based on the current trajectory, the future is bleak. Hospital workers are losing hope. 79% 
of OCHU members say they have no confidence or somewhat no confidence about the government improving health care system in the next year. This sense of hopelessness and despair is driving workers away. 43% say they are contemplating or somewhat contemplating leaving their job over the next year. All of this suggests that unless the government reverses course, we are headed towards a more, das more disastrous outcome, a more acute staffing crisis, more hospital service closures, and consequently, the worst patient outcomes. I'm going to turn it over to Dave Virch, the first Vice President of OCHU, to talk about some solutions we are recommending to alleviate the hospital crisis. Thank you, Sharon. My name is Dave Virch, and I'm the first Vice President of CUPE's Ontario Council of Hospital Unions, and I've worked as an RPN in our public health care system for 35 years. I'll lay out solutions that we are proposing to begin the long process of healing our health care system after prolonged cuts and closures. A quick note on funding cuts. We find it unconscionable that despite the unprecedented crisis in our hospitals, this year's budgets show a 0.5% increase in hospital budgets. When healthcare inflation is running at 5.6%, that's a real dollar cut. And it's mind-boggling that a government would double down on policies that are clearly detrimental. We know the two main issues driving, driving staff shortages are workloads and compensation. Over half of the workers polled by Nanos said they are dissatisfied with their compensation. And this figure would no doubt be higher if Doug Ford had his way and Bill 124 was still in effect. Even as hospital workers receive wage increases in nominal terms after Bill 124 was ruled unconstitutional, their real inc inc incomes have declined due to inflation. And that needs to change. All workers deserve re fair compensation, and that's especially true for healthcare workers, propping up a system in the face of government cutbacks. Higher compensation is direly needed at this stage when shortages are crippling our ERs and other services. To address workloads, we know that staffing levels must improve sharply. We estimate that Ontario would need 60,000 more staff over the next four years to keep up with population growth and aging. This requires a human health resources strategy which must include the promise of manageable workloads and that can be achieved through staff to patient ratios. In our ongoing round of bargaining with the Ontario Hospital Association, we have put forward a proposal to implement staff to patient ratios in all of our hospital departments, from ICUs to ERs to maternity wards and rehab units. Staffing ratios have been in place in California for two decades, with research showing improved quality of patient care, higher satisfaction level among staff due to more manageable workloads. This year, the British Columbia government became the first province to implement staffing ratios in Canada and we strongly believe that Ontario must follow their lead. Adding staff is invaluable, but we also know that stability and continuity of care is vital in hospital settings. That requires more full-time staff. Currently, only 50% of OCHU members in hospitals have full-time status. We are proposing an increase in that to 70% over a five-year period. This will enable better care and also help tackle the retention and recruitment challenge. These solutions will require significant investment from our government. Based on our research, we are calling for a $1.25 billion investment annually for the next four years on top of inflation to improve staffing levels, create more full-time jobs, add capacity to our hospitals, and what we can't afford, and it sounds absurd to vocalize this, is we can't afford more funding cuts. This is a relatively modest increase of $1.25 billion per year is more affordable for a government of Canada's richest province. And we think it's a very reasonable ask when we find ourselves in an unprecedented crisis. We'll now open the floor to questions. Have you shared two, two in five considering leaving the industry, what kind of impact would that have on the healthcare system going forward? 
I mean, I think it would be devastating. We're already seeing um, turnover rates of 10% per year, and this has been consistently high since since COVID has hit. Um, if we don't see a significant investment by this government, we feel that, that the health care system will, will spiral on a downward trend. Are some of these health care professionals going to the private sector? Uh, some are. I, I think some are, are absolutely just leaving the field completely. Uh, but that is a concern that, that the private sector will draw away more human resources from our public system and, and deplete it even further. What have your interactions with the government been like about this matter? Well, the government has told us, and I'm sure that you're well aware, um, that they are doing everything in their power. They're adding more spots into schools. They're, um, you know, uh, hiring foreign um, um, nurses to come and work. Um, but that isn't that isn't enough to retain. Um, the staff that they currently have, they need to do more. They need to invest in this system um, so that, you know, healthcare workers can see, um, you know, a bit of an opening um, for them. That's why we're calling on the government to invest $1.25 billion over the next four years. So some of these things that you've mentioned, you know, they are actual uh, mental health things that people might be dealing with, but even if uh, you know, you have more colleagues around you, you might not necessarily solve these issues. Are, are you feeling like healthcare workers are getting enough access to benefits um, and different sort of supports uh, around, whether it's peer mental supports or different things like that, or are you also making any, any asks there? Yes, yeah, so part of our survey um, talked about their working conditions, and this, these um, specific things that are, are there is because due to their working conditions, they are, you know, uh, working extremely hard every single day. Um, you know, there's 19,000 vacancies across Ontario hospitals. Often they're working short. Um, this is one of our asks of, um, you know, the Ontario Hospital Association around patient ratios. So if we had um, something around so many patients that a nurse or a PSW would have in one day, it would bring down their stress um, immensely, as well as, you know, um, the in increase of um, more funding so we can get retain and recruit new new people who have actually left so that they can come back and work. Many of our members have told us one of the reasons that they left is because of the crushing workloads that, that, that they have every single day. You also mentioned a concern that uh, many people don't have full-time hours. Is there any relationship with that and, and benefits and different things people can access? Yeah, so, you know, I'll 50% of uh, OCHU members who work in the hospital do not have full-time jobs. So many of them work in various jobs um, around, um, you know, around their community. And this is uh, definitely a problem because sometimes they're working, you know, seven, eight shifts in a row. They're not getting proper time off, um, you know, to um, relax, have time with their families. So their stress keeps going up and up and up. And, you know, Dave kind of mentioned about compensation, um, you know, as we see inflation climbing, compensation is a big fear for them. How do they pay their bills if they don't have full-time jobs, um, you know, and they're relying on just getting call-ins or, you know, shifts um, at different hospitals? You mentioned in the survey 41% of hospital workers dreading going to work and, and people who are crying while at work. Can you speak to why? Is it because of the workload? Is it because of the, the quality of care that they're able to provide? What were the findings there? Yeah, it is um, a lot about the workload. They, these people, um, you know, are trained and trained to give good patient care. When they're not able to do that, it is very upsetting to them. Um, you know, they go to school um, and, you know, they learn um, how to provide good patient care. When they're not able to do it, um, they're very upset. They know that th that they're stretched so thin that, you know, patient care is being, you know, put to the wayside. And this is very upsetting to them. Well, we've been listening to uh, members of QP uh, at Queen's Park uh, talking about the impact of the hospital staffing crisis uh, in the province right now and calling on the provincial government uh, to do more.